So this Acer laptop turns on, but it says no bootable device, inside boot disk and press any key, which is a very common problem. And today I'm going to show you how to troubleshoot and fix this very easily. Roll the intro. Hey Nim Tags and welcome back. This is Ash from Hilmai Tech, helping you go from newbie to techie. Before we start the usual disclaimer, this video is not sponsored. Any Amazon link is an affiliate one and also check out the timestamps below if you want to skip ahead to certain specific parts of the video. Thanks a lot. As usual, also show notes will be in the description and in the cards above. Also, if you've just stumbled on this video, please consider subscribing and check out my other previous videos and a lot more to come. So this is an Ace uh, Aspire E15 start and uh, it's got a code name of ES1-512-C3AH with an Intel Celeron processor N2840, Intel HD graphics, 4GB DDR3 memory and a 500GB hard disk drive. So the client tells me that the laptop was dropped and after that it's not been booting up into Windows. Usually when I hear that a laptop was dropped and after that doesn't boot up to Windows properly, that means most likely the hard disk is damaged. And we're going to test it to find out if that's correct. The first absolute check with laptops which are dropped is I give it a good shake. And I think I can hear evidence of some debris, could be a screw, could be some broken off parts. But anyway, we're going to go through the troubleshoot steps for this specific problem. So follow me onto the table. All right, so I've also I've plugged uh, the power at the back and I've also plugged in a mouse and a keyboard because the keyboard and trackpad is not responding according to the client, right? So we're going to first boot it up to see what message we get. Okay, so we've got no bootable device inside boot disk and press any key. Right, so the first thing I'm going to do is to go into the BIOS. So in this case, I'm going to use the keyboard because the keyboard on the laptop doesn't work. I'm going to press Ctrl, Alt and Delete key together and press F2 for this particular model. Now, if you have a different laptop, you have to check which key would work for you. Sometimes it's F10, sometimes it could be the ESC key. You have to check for your make and model. Now we are entering BIOS, okay? So first tab on the left information, I've got CPU type Intel Celeron CPU N2840 at 2.16 gigahertz, CPU speed 2.16, good. Now the next one is HDD0 model name and I've got none. Also HDD0 serial number and it's blank. Usually if the hard disk was working fine, here I would have to see some sort of model and make or some sort of reference, but I'm getting none here. So even if the boot order was changed, but the disk was working, that would still come up here. Now let's check that. We go right to main and uh, I don't see any secure boot, but I do see F12 boot menu, which means if I reboot this and press F12, I should get a boot menu to select the right disk and uh, going right security boot and boot i've got as boot order priority the first one is hard disk drive now do make sure you've got the correct drive um, selected as the first boot order sometimes it may have been changed in which case you'll have to go down with the arrow key and select whichever it is i think this one uh, for example if it was if your hard disk drive was number two press enter and then use on this laptop use five f5 or f6 to move it up or down Right, but we're going to leave it as such. I'm going to reboot this, uh, Control Alt and Delete. And uh, I'm sorry, I'm going to plug in this Linux Mint Sierra Cinnamon 18 32 bit version. Uh, in a previous video, I've explained why I use a Linux Live USB disk to troubleshoot many of the problems with a laptop and a desktop. Now, I did try a 64 bit Linux version, but it wasn't working. For some reason, it was frozen, it did not work, so I'm going to try a 32-bit. Now, if Linux doesn't work or Linux Mint, you should try a different Linux distribution like Ubuntu or anything else really, uh, just don't give up. Right, so I've plugged in the USB Linux 32-bit system on there. I'm going to reboot, Control alt and delete, press F12 on my laptop. Yours probably is going to be different, you should try and look up the boot order menu shortcut for your specific make and model. Okay. 
Right, now the boot option menu is giving me two. The first one is network boot, and the next one is USB HDD verbatim store and go, which is my plugged in uh, USB key. So I'm gonna use that one, select two, press enter. Now, uh, I don't know, okay, I've got a unit booting uh, option here, and uh, it's gonna automatically boot in four seconds. I'll leave it as, if it doesn't, I'm gonna redo it and select start Linux Mint. Right, so we've got Linux Mint logo, which is good news for now. By the way, if I forgot to tell you, I have no evidence of any noise coming from the disc spinning or when I put my hands at the bottom, I can't see, I can't feel any vibration, which also indicates that possibly the disc is dead. Right, I've got mouse cursor. Let me move the mouse cursor. That it seems to be moving. So, you know, so far I'm pretty convinced it's the hard disk that's dead. And if my suspicion is correct, we're gonna have the desktop environment and voila, desktop environment, here you are. Okay, cool. Um, that's good news. To me now, it's telling me the hard disk is absolutely dead. I'm convinced of it, but we'll do further test. Uh, go down to this little icon here, files, which is the equivalent of file manager for Windows. And again, if the disk was working, you would see a pop-up down here somewhere, but I can't see any other disk except for my computer and home desktop, etc. Right, we'll opt that. Uh, I've plugged in an Ethernet cable at the back of the laptop and I'm going to test the internet connection. So we can open the default browser, which is Fozilla, sorry, which is Mozilla Firefox. And we're going to test video and audio. Right, okay. Goody, goody, goody. We got a browser on. Let's go to YouTube. And we're going to open a video. And I think since this is my video, I'm gonna promote myself. Let's type in here my tech. And let's check out my last video, which I did, which is called The Pursuit of Degreeness. Study for free and earn a living. My inspirational story into tech. So I'll put the link below, please check it out. I'm gonna up the volume to the max. Let's see what happens. And uh, Jorge Macaroni. Five pages of script Brilliant. to share my thoughts on the pursuit of formal education like a degree and how I turned my career from a completely unrelated field into tech repair without any formal qualification, training or experience. But you know what? I can't put you through this torture, so let's scrap this and let's have a chat for the intro. <laughs> All right, <clears throat> done with the self-promotion and done with the testing. I am very convinced that the disk is dead, but the rest of the laptop is working fine using our very magical live USB disk. Okay, right. I'm gonna off that and let's do the conclusion of this video. So there you have it. We found that the problem was the disk which was damaged. Now, uh, to confirm this diagnosis, I would have to open the laptop and physically take the disc out and test it individually, but I'm pretty confident of my diagnosis. I'm 99.9% .9 confident. Also, this is an example of a laptop disc. There could be other problems. They could, the disc could be broken, that's one. The SATA ports on the disc could also be broken, or the SATA ports on the motherboard itself could be broken, or it could be a combination of two or all three of these issues. Needless to say that my recommendation always for laptops, and you can check out my video, I'm gonna put the link up there, never buy a laptop, do this instead, is to always go for a laptop with an SSD or upgrade to an SSD. Certainly if the client wants me to fix this, I would be recommend not this, but an SSD instead, which has far less chances of breaking off if it, even if it's dropped. Though I wouldn't recommend you to drop it just to find it out. Okay guys, so that's the end of this video. I hope you've enjoyed this. Also in my last video, I actually spoke about how I went from a completely different career in that I was a registered mental health nurse in the NHS for 10 years and how I joined the tech repair world with no qualification, training or experience. And I also share my thoughts on uh, pursuing a degree and what other alternatives you could be looking at if you wanted to study or earn a living. And if you like this kind of content, I will be sharing my journey a lot more in the view to try and help you, maybe if you want to emulate the same journey I've done. 
I also am considering and sharing my experience on being on YouTube and the things I've learned, especially the mistakes I've done, so you can avoid them yourselves. So let me know in the comments below if you want to see such videos. So that's all for today, folks. Uh, as always, this was Ash from Hill My Tech. So give me a like or dislike and leave me a comment below. And consider subscribing if you haven't done so yet. As always, this was a pleasure. This was Ash from Hill My Tech helping you go from newbie to techie. Until next time, peace out.